Inside Jobbing.com Arena in Glendale. The final meeting of the year between the Ducks and the Coyotes. Time for tonight's Keys to the Game is brought to you by your helpful SoCal Honda dealers. For those, we go to the Anaheim bench and Lisa Hillary. Bob, in a 15-win stretch, nine have been comeback style. What is, in your mind, a good first period? Well, you just want, especially in this building, they got a lot of speed, guys that uh, come at you hard. So we, you know, we just want to come out of this even or ahead uh, by a goal, and uh, we can do that. I like our chances. Thanks, Bob. Good luck. Thank you. John? Jonas Hiller gets the nod again tonight for the Ducks after a rare night off Thursday in Nashville. And Thomas Grice goes at the other end for the Phoenix Coyotes. The last time these two teams got together, Grice was outstanding. 38 saves in an overtime loss at Honda Center on the 28th of December. The coaches uh, think about that, and it factors into their decision to put Grice into a game like this. Puck chopped away from Winnick back in the Phoenix zone as we're underway, and now trying to get it out of the skates of the referee is Saku Koi. The referees for tonight's game are Francois Saint Laurent and Ian Walsh, the linesman Andy McElman and Brian Murphy. Ducks in their road whites, Phoenix in their home red as Yandel handles in the far corner of the Phoenix zone. Taken away by Cogliano. Quick puck movement to Koivu, but he couldn't get it back down low for Winnick. And it's cleared the hard way by the Coyotes. This is Ison. Yeah, that was a good play, a good try by Koivu, who had Daniel Winnick down low. But well defended by the Coyotes. The Ducks want to play a four-checking game tonight against this Phoenix club. And you have to be very alert about their defensemen, especially Yandel and Ekman Larson, who will jump into the attack and join the rush whenever possible. Koibu, eight points in his last eight games coming into tonight, takes a seat. You can see that big game he had on the 28th of December at Honda Center. The big line out for Anaheim, and Dustin Penner back in after missing the last two games with that elbow injury, and he gets the puck right on on a great feed from Perry. Grice has the game's first save. A great, great uh, stop by Grice off of Perry, and a nifty little backhand feed by Corey Perry. You see Dustin Penner say, great pass. Here's Perry, pick his head up, zips it, and then the key again is how much pace he puts on that pass. Antoine Vermette was surprised by it, went right between his skates onto the stick of Dustin Penner. Grice's last outing was on the 7th of this month, four days ago. He shut out the Calgary Flames in a 6-0 win here at Jobbing.com Arena, and he makes a save on Sammy Botman right off the draw. Ducks bring it back in, and now Grice will hold on to this one after the first two saves produced rebounds. Thomas Grice, I, I thought, was a terrific pickup, signed as an unrestricted free agent by the Coyotes uh, over the course of the summer. I, I thought he was a, did a real nice job as a backup with the San Jose Sharks. And there's an opportunity for Thomas Grice because of Mike Smith's struggles here in Phoenix this year to get a lot more playing time down the stretch. Uh, Smith, a loser of his last three outings, gets the night off tonight for Dave Tippett. And now the Coyotes work in the Anaheim zone. Radim Verbata has it knocked off his stick by Botnan, and now it's a foot race back into the Phoenix zone for it. And Oliver ekman Larson is there. Ridden off the puck behind the net, though. Nice job by Paul Mary, and he gets it back out to the line. Fowler got it back to him. He sends it across. And Connor Murphy has it knocked away by Valeski. Here's Paul Mary, point blank, and a good save by Grice, who is sharp early on. Yeah, he's had to have been because the Ducks have uh, forced some turnovers here and generated a couple of good scoring chances off of those turnovers. Loose puck rolls away from Ribeiro in his own zone, and Ekman Larson able to angle it back to him at center. Mike Ribeiro. Now this fourth NHL team, give and go with Shane Doan. And from behind the net, Ribeiro sends it around. It got away from Bodker. And the shot from the far boards gets through. Hiller made the save but couldn't find the rebound as Klesla creating a little havoc, getting it on the Anaheim net. Been a difficult year for Rostislav Klesla. He actually spent some time down in the American League. Here's Perot into the slot, and Silverberg has his stick slashed away at the moment of truth. Well, that was Marty Hansel on the back check, and may have got away with a hook there on Jacob Silverberg. Chances abound primarily for the Ducks here in the early going, but the Coyotes had one earlier. Now it's Daniel Winnick who digs it free through center and into the Phoenix zone off the stick of Grice to the high glass and out of play. So we were talking about Matt Pileski playing with the big line. Here he is playing on the new line with Nick Benino and Paul Mary, and it was the forecheck of Pileski and a good read by Benino to support him down low that led to that chance. 
And then here's the play for Jacob Silverberg. And uh, you know what? Looking at it from that angle, I, I did not see contact with the hands of Silverberg by Martin Hansel. So a good no call by the official. Silverberg drawing back into the Anaheim lineup tonight after being a healthy scratch in Nashville on Thursday. Puck to the corner, and Keith Yandel digs it out and finds Chip Chura out of the zone. Chip Chura getting back in after missing his first game of the year on Thursday for the Coyotes here in a loss against Minnesota. The former Duck going up against his old team. Koivu trying to give it back to Winnick, and it trickles to the near corner. Cogliano beaten to it as Derek Morris gets a stick on it. Up the wall, the battle ensues. Fistrick pinches, keeps it in for a moment. But it's brought back by Chip Chura. Weaves his way into the Anaheim zone, but Kennedy was offside on the play. John Gibson is the backup goaltender tonight for the Ducks. Uh, has been recalled from Norfolk of the American Hockey League. And uh, there, Gibson got off to just a terrific start to his pro career. The month of October named the player of the month in that league. Uh, he's coming up primarily because they want Freddie Anderson to play some more games. So Anderson has gone down. And it's a little bit of a, an opportunity as well, John, for Gibson to spend some time with goaltending coach Wayne Rollison. Well, you remember Anderson went down in early November and he caught the flu while he was in Norfolk. Didn't play for two weeks, then got recalled. And then really saw spot duty after his return. It's been Jonas Hiller most of the way. So you're talking about a two-month period of time. Actually, a little more. And Anderson had only played about three or four games. Hence the reasoning the Ducks wanted to get him out there. Point blank save on Korpakoski, but he gets his own rebound. And Phoenix strikes first. Not much Hiller could do there. He made the initial save. Well, this is the most dangerous offensive line for the Coyotes with Korpakoski on one wing, Verbata on the other. And Lindholm actually did a good job breaking up that two-on-one, but then uh, kind of a strange bounce, and the puck eludes Dustin Penner. And Korpakowski is the, the beneficiary of not one good bounce, but a second one that comes right back to him. He makes no mistake on the rebound. And watch the second chance by Korpakowski. The shot is perfect off the post and in. Seventh of the year for the native of Finland who's on his way to the Olympic Games. He missed 16 games earlier this season due to an upper body injury. And he's given Phoenix a 1-0 lead. So Anaheim comes out and carries the play through the first four and a half minutes, and yet they find themselves trailing one to nothing. Paul Mary intercepts at center and sends it in. Grice wanders out to play. He assists on the goal to Verbata and Hansel at 357. Good Saturday night crowd here at jobbing.com arena and that gets them into the game in the early going. It's amazing those big saves made early by Thomas Grice, the impact that they have on a game like this. Because the Ducks were all over the Coyotes, couldn't bury one and now Phoenix gains confidence. They're right in this game. They've got the lead that they were looking for. Yandel has his bid blocked by Francois Beauchemin. Anaheim is used to where they sit and that's trailing in the hockey game. They've given up the first goal nine times in their last 15 wins. Here's Shane Doan. Curls at the bottom of the circle. Gives it back for Derek Morris. The veteran defenseman finds Mike Rivera to Morris. One-timer. Swallowed up by Hiller. So you could say the Ducks have got the Coyotes great where they want them. <laughs> well, when you look at these numbers, perhaps. Yeah, 14-5-1. Now only one other team in the league, Vancouver, with a record above 500 when their opponent does score the first goal. Anaheim 9 over the 500 mark. Uh, but the, I think the expression on the face of Bruce Boudreaux is pretty indicative of the fact that he's not happy about the fact that they continue to give up that opening goal in games. Halpern to oppose Koivu on the draw to the left of Hiller. Jonas Hiller now fourth in the league with 21 victories on the season. As it's been since late November since he suffered a loss. Puck chopped at the Phoenix line, was onside momentarily, but Winnick couldn't get a stick on it. Now he strides back to get it in his own zone. A strike ahead at center as Votnin finds Koivu and it's Cogliano with speed up the right boards. Open left point, Fistrick. His shot gets through. Grice aggressively comes out. 
made the initial save, and the carom almost went off the back of the Phoenix netminder. Botnan again pinches his centering pass, Miss Cogliano, possible two-on-one. Botnan trying to get back into the play as Chip Chura has Halpert. Halpert fires in and out of the glove of Hiller, who will cover up a penalty coming up against the Ducks. An inauspicious debut in Phoenix. The Ducks down a goal early. They'll be down a man when we return. Well, Sammy Botnan uh, has been given a penalty for interference. We'll get a look at it. Uh, puck turns over. There's Botnan on the right side. Watch what happens here. And it's Kyle Chipchura who is the second player in on the rush. Botnan, if he had known that it was Kyle Chipchura, could have skated right by him. Chipchura does a good job of changing his skating angle there. And it's a battle to see who can get whose shoulder in front of the other guy in the referee's estimation with interference on Sammy Botnan. 14th ranked power play in the league for Phoenix. It's the first chance of the night. They're 19% on the year. They have struggled in the season series against the Ducks, however. Just one of 16. Fistrick back to get it in the Anaheim zone. Feels the pressure. Tries to just eat the puck along the boards and does long enough for Boschman to get it ahead to Winnick. Nice bit of penalty killing there by the Ducks, and Winnick does the honors. Two big, strong boys on the blue line for the Ducks with Boschman and Fistrick. Two hitters down low. Coyotes right back in, and Ekman Larson has the pass. Glance off his skate, and it's Fistrick again, just chopping at the length of the ice, and Cogliano putting the pressure the other way. Cogliano leads the league in shorthanded points, and it's not hard to figure out why when you watch him with the speed pressuring on the forecheck. He goes to the bench for a change. Bonino comes over the boards for him, and now Yandel walks the line. Ekman Larson shot off a skate. Benino wins a puck battle and sends it back. Yeah, good job there by Nick Benino to protect that puck, use his body. He knew that Mike Ribeiro was kind of breathing down his neck. And a smart defensive play. 45 seconds in the Phoenix man advantage as Verbata gets it in. Knocked loose by Boschman and lifted the length of the ice by Benino. Grice stops it behind the net. Ducks get fresh penalty killers back on the ice as Getzloff and Perry join the crew. Hansel up the boards, goes behind the back for Stone. Across for Morris. Measures, takes the shot, tipped right on. Nice looking play as Ribeiro got the redirect. Held in at the line and fired on goal by Stone. Hiller on his feet, blockered that one aside. And Perry digs it off the wall. Time and space for Getzloff. Perry heads up ice as he sends it all the way down. And the penalty is over. The Coyotes 0 for 1 on the power play with just one shot on goal during that opportunity. Even that dump in was with a purpose by Ryan Getzloff, who spotted Corey Perry streaking down the ice and unfortunately didn't quite get the carom off of the inboards he was looking for. We will twist the top on Miller time coming up later on in tonight's game. As always brought to you by Miller Lite. And as we look back on one of the key moments in tonight's hockey game, or I guess you can just pull the tab as well. It's good to be versatile. <laughs> Face off in the ring to the right of Grice. Twelfth appearance in goal this season for Grice. Mike Smith third in the league in games played coming into tonight, but this is the second straight time he's had the night off against the Ducks. Michael Stone trying to get away from Bolesky, but he can't. And Benino gets on the puck, threw it in front, Morris swats it away, and Klinkhammer rolls it to center ice. Great read by Fowler, who hinges over to get to that loose puck, and now stretches it off the boards for Palmieri. Grice out to play it, and he'll move it along. Lovejoy waits and keeps it deep. Around to the near corner. Benino brings it up the wall. Now for Palmieri. Kyle Palmieri battles his way to the front of the net. Poke checked away by Grice. A good play by Palmieri. He got around Connor Murphy. And again, the Desert Dogs forced to ice the puck. I love it when I see Kyle Palmieri uh, taking the puck off the sidewall and see him just get inside of Connor Murphy. And uh, he makes a beeline in front of the net. Actually, well played by the goaltender, Grice. Watch him get the paddle of the goal stick down. Just kind of knock it away from Paul Mary, but uh, you keep going to the net, and sometimes that puck, as the goaltender is down on the ice, it hits him, and then it pops back out in front of the net, and he's out of position. So keep going to the front of the net with pace, and good things happen. Coyotes bring it out, but it's stripped away from Hansel by Perry. Nice play by Perry, who misses the mark as it goes high and off the glass. 
Perry again, knocking it into the middle of the ice. It trickles over. Boschma with a drive. Traffic in front. And a good save by Grice. Perry was parked on the doorstep looking for a redirect. We'll watch again to see if Corey Perry stays in the shooting lane. No, he kind of steps to the side to try and get the tip, and he'll be mad at himself for not making contact with that puck. I mean, that's the decision that you make all the time as a goal scorer like Corey Perry is. Do I just set up the screen and then look for the rebound, or do I try and get a touch on the initial shot coming in? Nice face-off win by Perot. His stick was tied up. He kicked it back, and this is Patrick Maroon for Perot from a bad angle off the side of the net, and Maroon gets it again. Silverberg in front and taken off the skate by Perot, but he can't get the backhand to the Phoenix goal. Hounding Morris, who's forced to reverse it away. And now Mikhail Bodker, handcuffed a little bit, just rifles it all the way back out of the reach of Ribeiro, but no icing as he got the angle and is bumped off the puck. Nice play by Lovejoy. Maroon trying to chip it into the middle, but Bodker takes it away. Mikhail Bodker leaves it at the point, and Yandel winds it around. Keith Yandel, the Boston native, goes to the bench for a change. Stone's shot blocked in front. Michael Stone has eight goals from the Phoenix Blue Line this season, one of the leading scoring defensemen in the NHL this year. Lovejoy sets up from behind the Anaheim goal, and now Fowler looking for a passing lane. Off the stick of Winnick, the former Coyote watches it sail right back past him, and Fowler will restart. Into the middle of the ice, the open man Cogliano tips it wide. Grice out to tap it away from the hard-charging duck forward. Up the boards. Halpern gets a touch on it, but again, he was on the wrong side of the red line, so the call is icing. This season, when the Ducks score five goals or more, Hooters gives you five free wings. Print the coupon from the comfort of your own home and score your free wings within 24 hours at the Hooters destination in Southern California nearest to you. Uh, Johnny Sheen uh, has been the captain of the Coyotes now for 10 seasons. Good to see him back in the lineup. He had that bout with Rocky Mountain spotted fever, one we hadn't heard much about. The energy level is starting to come back for Shane Doan, and his head coach, Dave Tippett, was saying earlier today that it's going to take a little time for him to get right up to speed. Doan playing his 100th career game tonight against the Ducks, including regular season and postseason. Becomes the first player ever to appear in 100 games against Anaheim in Ducks franchise history. Here's, well, I thought they would call that a hand pass as Getzloff moved it and Penner played it, but play goes on. And Korpakoski, the game's goal scorer, winds it into the Anaheim zone. Botnan picks it off the end boards. Doesn't break stride. His pass is off the skate of Penner. Oh, they're going to call that icing. Wow. I'm perplexed. The pass wasn't uh, perfect from Sammy Botnan, but you got to like the fact the way he gets his legs moving in the defensive zone. Always the best way to exit the D zone is if your defenseman can skate it out of harm's way, elude the forecheck. I had a chance to talk to Sammy in Nashville for the game on Thursday, Brian. I hadn't spoken to him since the selection of the Olympic team. I congratulated him, and he said, well, it'll be fun, like it always is. And I asked Saku Koivu, I said, does he get excited about anything? And he said, you know, I don't know him that well yet, but I haven't seen him get excited about anything. Maybe come the actual Olympic Games, there might be a little more than a blip on the radar screen from number 45. Rotman, to me, is, is a kid who just expects to be good. very, very good. Yeah. And, and uh, there's no doubt in his mind that he's going to do well at the Olympics. Vermette with a swing and a miss, and Morris tries to hook it back on goal. The Lindholm blocked that. Clinkhammer sent to the ice in front of the net. Vermette holds it in, trying to force oh it past him was Paul Mary, and he was gone if he had. Now the Ducks do come up with it, high in the zone, and quickly moving it up is Getzloff. Paul Mary across the line. Thinks better at dropping it. Now does drop it to Benino. He goes in deep. Oh, and his shot block. Rebound. Score. Hampus Lindholm. What a play by Paul Mary as he crossed the offensive blue line. A great stop by Grice on the initial bid by Nick Benino, but Lindholm, second goal of the season for Hampus Lindholm against these Coyotes. Here's the play by Paul Mary, though. I mean, he just dances around a couple of defenders. And Benino's in all alone. Great stop by Thomas Grice, but he cannot recover the rebound. And there's Matt Pileski again, John, going to the front of the net. 
and drawing people towards him. And, and just by staying there, it prevents Derek Morris from having an opportunity to make a play on that puck. So a good play again by Bolesky that goes to the net. And the Ducks get some depth scoring again. Well, Hampus Lindholm likes playing against the Phoenix Coyotes. He's got four NHL goals in his NHL experience. Two of them against the Coyotes. And he's tied this game. Benino will pick up an assist. And Paul Mary, the other helper. And the Ducks have drawn even as we're just over seven minutes remaining now in the opening period. Time of the goal, 12-27. Now it's Cogliano speeding into the Phoenix zone. Pulls up, alone in front, Fowler, and he tries to go back short side. Grice stays with him and makes the save. Tell you what, uh, Thomas Grice has just been terrific in the first thing, 13 minutes of this hockey game. The Ducks dangerous on the attack. This time it's Cam Fowler's turn to, to get involved. It's a 1-1 game. Cam Fowler is circled to the bottom right of your screen. He's an outstanding skating defenseman. Just focus on Fowler here. Puck turns up the ice and watch him put his head down and join the rush. He's going to cut across the grain, move all the way over to the left side. Cogliano spots him, and he is denied right on the doorstep by Thomas Grice. Off the faceoff in the Phoenix zone. Patrick Maroon digs it loose. Perot backhands it to Fowler at the line. Rolling puck that he shoots one off the skate of Maroon. Penalty coming up as Grice covers up. And I believe the Ducks are going to get their first power play opportunity of the night. Now Maroon was going hard to the front of the net. And somebody got his stick right into the midsection of it. Was it? Uh, oh, Klesla. It's going to be Rusty Klesla that goes off. Right side of your screen. A little bit of a tug, not much of one. Boy, oh boy, that's a marginal call that goes in favor of Anaheim. So the Ducks, who have played probably their strongest opening period, John, in a long, long time, get an opportunity here with the extra man. 13-year veteran Klesla takes a seat. Anaheim on the season series, 4 of 15 against a much maligned Phoenix penalty killing unit. They come into tonight's action. Fifth to last in the league at just over 78%, but they work their way into the Anaheim zone immediately. And Ekman Larson rags it back. Connor Murphy across for Ekman Larson, who picks his spot and now lobs at the length of the ice. Verbata had to wait to get onside. Gets lobbed to the corner after it. Verbata takes it away. Tries to center and Hansel's stick lifted at the moment of truth that comes all the way back to Christ. A smart play by Grice. He didn't want that to go for icing. He wants to waste a little bit more time off the clock, and he does that. And the Ducks are being outworked here by the Phoenix Coyotes penalty killers. Hiller takes the long lob and makes the catch on it and says, you know what, let's start over, and the Ducks will do that with a minute 19 remaining in their first power play opportunity of the night. Ducks five of ten, excuse me, Brian, on the power play in the last three games. See the referee come over and say to Jonas Hiller, you need to move that puck. That used to drive me crazy when uh, referees would say that to you. And you'd look at him and go, if I put it on the ice, the other guy might shoot it into the net. It's kind of my job not to allow him to do that. I think my response would have probably been, well, then why'd you blow the whistle if you want me to play the puck? You don't have to blow the whistle. Morris is shot off the faceoff over top of the goal. Well, you wouldn't know it, but the Phoenix Coyotes are the only team in the NHL that don't have a shorthanded goal. However, this entire Anaheim power play has been played in the Ducks zone, and it's halfway over. Palmieri loses his footing at the line, and here's Halpern with Korpakoski shorthanded. He feathers it behind the net, and Hiller out to play it. You know, the Ducks just haven't been able to get anything set up. Even their breakouts here on this power play have looked a little disorganized. Palmieri gains the line using his skate to get the pass that was a touch behind him as Penner. It bounces free into the middle of the ice, and Moss tries to hand it off. Silverberg did a good job to keep it in. And now I believe we got a penalty against the Ducks. Not sure what this one is about. It's Hampus Lindholm, but I don't know for what. Ian Walsh points out the penalty box to Hampus as if he wasn't exactly sure where it was. And it'll be four on four for 29 seconds. See if we can pick it up. Bottom left corner of the screen. A little grab and a significant embellishment by the Coyotes that 
draws the call against Hampus Lindholm. So, uh, boy, if I'm a player right now, I'm kind of wondering what the referees are going to call in this game, John. Well, you pointed out each of the last two penalties, Brian, borderline. So you got to wonder where the line is right now. Are they going to call it as close as they've called the last two? The hope is no, or we'll have a special teams battle tonight in Phoenix. 15 seconds of four on four. Then the Coyotes would have their second power play of the opening period. Tied at one at jobbing.com. And the pass hops the stick of Getzloff into the Phoenix zone. Boy, the Coyotes very nearly threw it away in front of their own net. They'll get a break there, and now it's Keith Yandel. Leads this team with 12 power play assists, and he serpentines his way into the Anaheim zone. Cross ice pass broken up and battled out of the zone by Getzloff. Now it's Verbata who starts back. Trailing the play is Yandel, and now he'll back to the point as the Coyotes are set up. Into the middle, Ekman Larson for Ribeiro. Now it's Yandel. The crowd encouraging him to shoot. Instead, he passes it over, and a one-timer kicked aside off the stick of Verbata. Hiller with a good stop there. That's a real good stop for Radim Verbata, along with Shane Doan, the two most dangerous weapons on this Phoenix power play. Doan leads them all with six power play goals. Verbata's got five. Verbata shares the team lead in scoring with Mike Ribeiro coming into tonight's action with 31 points. Hansel now feeds it back to the line. Ekman, Larson, and Yandel play catch. Yandel with a wrist shot. That gets through. Loose rebound. Ribeiro tied up. Ekman, Larson had a bid. Goes behind the net. Ribeiro gets it back. Ekman, Larson curls off the right boards. His point covered by Bodker. Now Ribeiro. Ever cautious. Gets it across. Yandel drops it back. Ekman Larson's shot blocked by Fistrick. That took a bite out of Fistrick. Ekman Larson with 10 seconds in the power play. Steers it to Yandel. That's blocked by Winnick. A rolling puck that won't clear the zone. And then Winnick trying to knock it away from Yandel. The open man is Oliver Ekman Larson. Wrist shot blocked by Boschema. The penalty is over. Coyotes continue on working in the Anaheim zone. Bodker covers the point once more. Hansel tied up, able to move it along. And it's a physical battle between Fistrick and Ribeiro in the corner. Former teammates in Dallas, and the Ducks win the puck battle as Koivu came to help out. Boschma finds an open man, Lindholm, out of the box, and he angles it off the wall back into the Phoenix zone. Oh, great job by the penalty killers. They pay the price to get through that Coyote power play. Phoenix had the puck pretty much the entire two minutes in the Ducks zone, and they had to get into shooting lanes. There's going to be some ice bags on that flight to Anaheim, John, as a result. The Coyotes in the last two years now just 2 of 27 on the power play against Anaheim. The Ducks have their number from a penalty-killing standpoint, but it doesn't come without a cost. Fistrick being tended to on the Anaheim bench by Joe Huff. You can see he's not too eager to take a seat right now. And perhaps with two and a half to go in the period, he'll have the early exit to the locker room. That appears to be the case. You know, they take those shots, and, and if they hit you know, any soft tissue, it's not a problem. But, uh, boy, when they start hitting bones, bad things happen. Rolling puck right to Grice, and he steers it away, but the Ducks right on top on the forecheck. Pileski gets it back to Palmieri. Open his love joy. Takes the shot. Kicked aside by Grice. Goes off the board straight up in the air. But Kyle Palmieri's had a strong opening period. Yeah, he sure has. Now he engages Kennedy on the far boards and wins the puck. It rolls in front. Stone, careful to curl it away from Benino. And the only play for Klesla is to just lob it to center ice. Shane Doan comes away with it. Strides up the left wing. Forced to the outside by Silverberg. And now in behind the goal. Nice play by Jacob Silverberg. He got inside on Doan and did not give up. Keeps the legs moving. That's the key. Silverberg, the smaller man, uh, wins the puck battle with Shane Doan. Now it's Yandel who sets up behind the Phoenix goal. 90 seconds to go. In a tied opening period in Phoenix. 1-1. Coyotes struck first. The answer back for Anaheim came from Hampus Lindholm, the rookie with his fourth of the year. Now shares the defensive goal scoring lead for the Ducks this year. Boschema got a stick on it. It squirts right to the middle of the ice. Backhand bid goes wide by Hansel as Lindholm stepped in. Now pokes it away from Burbata. Hampus chases to the near side and he'll win the race and clear the zone. Morris trying to angle it back in, but he misses Hansel. 
And it angles into the Anaheim zone. An icing call with just a shade under a minute now to go in the opening frame. Johnny, let's go back. We saw Mark Fisterick go to the Anaheim locker room. Here's why. It's a bomb from the point. And uh, he was out playing a little bit of road hockey goalie there as, as he was challenging the shot from the blue line. And uh, they have taken a bite out of him. Didn't look up there. When, when he looked up, he's looking at the clock. Right. See how much time is left in the period. Because he's got a good sense about whether or not he's going to have another shift off. That, that's a good sign when Fistrick looks at the clock. He knows he's uh, not going to miss a shift by going to the locker room. He doesn't want to tax the other defenseman by leaving if there's too much time left in the period. Lovejoy measures, then takes the shot. It bounces off of Grice. Cleared. And again, it's Fowler who races to the loose puck. 40 seconds to go, opening frame. And Fowler has it dislodged by Hansel, but he recovers possession and circles. Up the middle, Penner tips it into the Phoenix zone. Yandel takes it off his skate. Coyotes have won just three of their last ten. Tonight is the final of a six-game homestand, and a win would be a break-even six-point trip on the homestand. It's their longest homestand of the year, and regardless of what happens tonight, it's been a little disappointing. Perry now behind the Phoenix goal, rolls it right in front, and it's covered up by Ekman Larson. Under 10 to go in the period as Vermette finds Moss at center. Long bid sent in by Klinkhammer and steered away by Hiller. Smart play there because he realized there was little time left in the period, and that'll do it for the opening frame. Well, it's the best opening period we've seen from the Ducks in a long, long time. Uh, they're tied after one, but if not for Thomas Grice, they could easily have the lead. I think overall, the head coach will be much more pleased with the way his charges performed here tonight. And 27-year-old German netminder Thomas Grice, very good in the opening period. 14 saves in all, particularly in the opening three or four minutes. And he and the Coyotes all square with the Ducks after one period of play. On Thursday night, Anaheim opened a season series with Conference Bowl Nashville. Tonight, they close a season series with Division Bowl Phoenix, all square through 20 minutes. It's a tie hockey game in Glendale, 1-1 after 1 at Jobbing.com Arena between the Ducks and Phoenix Coyotes. John and Brian back with you from the broadcast booth. Anaheim got 15 shots in that opening period. 60% of them came from their defense. I'll help you out. That's nine total. No surprise that the goal came from a defenseman. You know, um, Hampus Lindholm has been terrific for the Ducks. The Ducks, I thought, were skating as well as we've seen them in a long, long time as we take a look at our Honda highlights from the opening period. Dustin Penner had a point-blank chance in the early going. Kyle Palmieri with a point-blank chance uh, in the first five minutes of the period. I, I thought the Grice was exceptional. It was the Coyotes that got on the board. A good play by Korbakowski. Collects his own rebound. Buries it in behind Hiller to make it 1-0 in favor of Phoenix. The Ducks would get that one back. Again, the depth scoring. Nick Benino is robbed by Grice. And then Hampus Lindholm kind of throws a knuckleball into the net to tie this game up at one apiece. But, you know, you mentioned the defense joining the rush, joining the attack. They were doing it for the entire opening period. And, and they were doing it selectively, John. They weren't putting themselves at risk for being caught up ice. So I, I really like the period from Fowler, from Votnin from Lindholm clearly because uh, these young defensemen are really doing a good job picking their spots. Well, speaking of the D, time for Who Got It Done brought to you by YP.com and it's Hampus Lindholm who gets it done against the Coyotes. Yeah, and this is his first career goal. It, it happened back on November the 6th. Uh, Lindholm got that one in behind uh, Mike Smith in that game. Uh, tonight, it was Rice who was, who was able to beat on the rebound. So, uh, interesting as we uh, watch how things unfold here in the second period. For more, we go to the Anaheim bench and Lisa Hillary. John, thank you. Brad, some good moments there in that first period, especially when the pressure's on Grice. Do you want to see more than that? No, we did some good things, you know. I think the one thing, when we had 15 shots, but I think some of the shots he was able to see. We just got to get more traffic to him and, and look for second and third opportunities. Thanks, Brad. Good luck. Thank you. John? Well, Bob Woods told Lisa before the start of the game if they could get out of the first period even or better, that would be the definition of a good start. A good start as we get set to begin the middle period. Yeah, Grice was good in, in the opening 20 minutes tonight. You know, the, the book on Thomas Grice is that he's just a rock-solid goaltender, and it looks like one of those nights tonight that they're going to have to beat him with rebounds because nothing clean was getting through him in the opening period, that's for sure. Underway in the second. Boschma under duress has it knocked away. Don't 
or excuse me, Moss couldn't get it to the net, and then a point shot by Yandel kicked aside by Hiller. Fired wide from the near boards by Moss again as the pressure continues from Phoenix. Klinkhammer in the corner has it taken away by Lindholm, and the outlet pass doesn't make it to Koivu Vermet. This is the mark, tries again. Hiller makes the save, and again, unable to get the rebound on that was Moss. Yandel shot, knocked out of midair by Boschema. Defender fell down with Murphy, but he got up to break up the breakaway pass for Cogliano. A lot happened in the first 40 seconds. Well, that should have been icing, too. I don't know why it was not. The Coyotes bench was a little bit up in arms. And here's a breakaway pass to Verbata. Fowler stays with him. He's going to take a penalty, however, as Hiller makes the save. We're going to call it a holding penalty against Cam Fowler. Radim Verbata gets in behind the Anaheim defense. Uh, the Ducks, second period, long change, changed up their defense, and they were unable to protect that long pass to Verbata. And uh, there's the grab by Fowler. Once he takes one hand off the hockey stick, the referee is going to make that call every time. But, uh, boy, if you ever want to talk about a good penalty, that's probably a good penalty taken by Fowler. Well, just his fifth minor penalty of the season, and it's the third power play of the night for the Coyotes. Point shot partially blocked, comes through, though, and Hiller smothers. And they'll do it again in the Anaheim zone, just five seconds off the clock. You know, in, in the opening period, uh, the Ducks had a power play, and I thought they lost momentum. It, it was a very poor power play for Anaheim. The Coyotes, on the other hand, had all kinds of offensive zone time, put all kinds of pressure against Jonas Hiller. They actually had four of their shots in the opening period came on their one power play, so they might not be scoring, but they've been dangerous. Here's Yandel. Wrist shot off the post and out of... Oh, I thought it went out of the rink, but it didn't. It stays in behind the net, and Hansel whips it right back out. Ekman Larson plays it across, gets it back from Yandel, and then the cross-ice pass tipped away by Benino. Ducks pressure. Yandel throws it to the net. That's punched away by Boschman, and Anaheim clears. Verbata has it just ricochet off his stick. And the Ducks go for changes on the kill. 45 seconds gone in the Phoenix man advantage. Yandel forced to just go parallel at the blue line. Has to curl back and now just dumps it in. Lovejoy got a stick on it but couldn't possess. And now it's Oliver Ekman Larson. Works it over for Mike Ribeiro. Ribeiro was a top 10 scorer in the league a season ago. Was fifth in assists. He gets it back to Ekman Larson, whose shot is blocked. Yandel keeps it alive. Don't just couldn't handle the pass cleanly. But again, uh, lots of offensive zone time here for this Phoenix power play. A bad pass there by Shane Doan, but uh, second period, boy, it's tough when you get opportunities to clear the puck and you don't clear it the length of the ice. That's when the penalty killers are really vulnerable. Still 25 seconds in the man advantage, Mikhail Bodker. Leading goal scorer with 14 for the Coyotes. Tries to bring it into the zone, but it's Winnick who brings it back out. And now he'll pick his spot down the near side boards and get it all the way behind the Phoenix goal. Morris pressured by Silverberg. And one last rush on the Phoenix man advantage. District back on the ice uh, for the Ducks. So it looks like that's good news for Anaheim, and he's going to be okay. No shots on goal for the Coyote extra man unit as Stone sends it right back in and Fowler out of the box. Vermette battles along the near boards. Winnick digs it out from underneath him, and Botten, an overrun in the corner, loses the puck to Moss. Tries to center. Great defensive play. Laying down, Fistrick took away the passing lane. Ducks will change just over three minutes into the second period. Tied at one in Phoenix. Lori Korpakoski, the goal scorer for the Coyotes, drops it off. Vermette's shot is held by Jonas Hiller. Well, the Coyotes have come out uh, in this second period and put all kinds of pressure on Jonas Hiller. Watch Marty Hansel go to the front of the net. He gets a touch on this shot. It touches the shoulder of Jonas Hiller, and then it's off of the crossbar. So first big break for either goaltender belongs to Jonas Hiller. And here's where Mark Fistrick laid down, stretched out with that stick, uh, used it to block the pass across. Nice defensive read by him. A false draw to the right of Hiller. So they'll reset and do it again. Jeff Halpern and Ryan Getzloff, the two centermen who will take the draw. 
Coyotes head out on the road after this one. They go to Winnipeg where they will play on Monday. The Ducks are home to play host to the Detroit Red Wings tomorrow. And what will be the back end of back-to-backs? Outlet pass by Getzloff. Ricocheted right to the Phoenix goal. So the Coyotes forced to play it along. Popakoski unable to battle it out of the zone as Getzloff won't give up the blue line. Penner takes a swipe at it and Ekman Larson skates away. Halpern chases, Lovejoy beats him to it and winds it around. Getzloff has time, holds the puck and gets his pass through. Perry into the Phoenix zone, hands it off to Penner. His shot held by Thomas Grice. Ryan Getzloff in the neutral zone, he throws a puck to the wide side. The Coyotes thought they were going to be able to intercept it when they could not. It actually led to a three on two break for the Ducks. Here's Getzloff. Goes to throw a backhand, and you can see the Shane Doan was trying to step into that lane, and he got caught up ice. And that led to the three-on-two rush and the bid by Dustin Penner. Boy, Penner's had some chances in this game, John, but he just hasn't been able to make the shot that he was looking for. Shane Doan skiing on Lindholm into the Anaheim zone. Bodker picks up the loose change. Mikhail Bodker turns, fires, that's blocked. And now the puck battle ensues, and Palmieri at least clears the line with it. Keith Yandel retreats into his own zone as the Coyotes regroup, and Derek Morris sends it ahead. Across the line, it's Doan, his shot partially blocked by Benino. Ducks blocked a lot of shots in the win at Nashville on Thursday. None more than Cam Fowler, who was in front of five of them. The forwards have been doing a good job blocking shots in this one here tonight. Paul Mary up the near boards, forces Chip Chura to turn away from him, and now into the middle of the ice, here's Kyle Chip Chura. Gets it to the net, big rebound, was about waist high, and Kennedy took a swing at it, but couldn't get it back on goal. Klesla has it sneak past him, and now it's a foot race, and Perot beaten to the puck by Michael Stone. But this, following up Botman, excuse me. Uh, this season, uh, the second periods for Phoenix have been just flat out dominant for them. And uh, Ducks are getting a little bit of a taste of that. Phoenix has been very, very strong here in the first five minutes of this period. Perot keeps a puck in. Silverberg trying to get it out of his feet. Back to Perot, swing and a miss, but right to Botman who tees it up. Score! Oh, that one just filtered right through Thomas Grice. And Anaheim has the lead. Yeah, that's a bad goal that Grice gives up. A long range, and Botnan was stationary when he shot this puck. And Grice just takes his eye off it, and it goes right through him. This is a huge break for Anaheim. I just had mentioned how well Phoenix had been playing in this second period. And then their goaltender makes a bad mistake. I mean, that's not a deflected puck. It goes right through the wickets. And he's got to come up with this one. You know, you know, sometimes you know, goaltenders, the way they teach them today, they don't use their hands on shots that are off the ice. That shot was about eight inches off the ice. You've got to catch that puck when there's no one around the front of the net. Silverberg draws the assist at 546, and Anaheim has their first lead of the night, 2-1. to one. You saw the two goal scorers on the bench having a chuckle, Lindholm and Botnan. That's about as excited as Sammy Botnan gets right there. <laughs> well, he does like to score. Yeah. It does get a rise out of him. Well, it looks like a howitzer on the score sheet, Paisy. It's the difference in the game now, 2-1. to one. The Ducks with goals from a pair of their young defensemen here tonight. And they lead it 2-1. to one. Well, we, we talked about Anaheim's offense, and uh, boy, you look at the season. I mean, that's goal number five for Sammy Botnan. Fowler's got four goals. Ben Lovejoy's got three goals. Remember the first about 15 games yeah. of the regular season, they had zero goals from the blue line. They were the last team to get a goal from a defenseman. Here's Perry. He tried to pick the high short side as he came from behind the goal. The goal by Lindholm tonight was his fourth of the season, and a nice little hip check there by the 19, soon to be 20 year old, and that dislodges the puck. Loshima comes up with it, tries to clear. Well, he got a break as it went off a big Marty Hansel and did come out of the zone. Getzloff got it over, and Penner just couldn't possess it. Now Hansel trying to chip it through and go get it himself. Hiller plays it away as Boschman lost a glove and fishes it out of the Anaheim net. Cogliano, meantime, gets it deep. Morris overskates it in the corner. Winnick trying to get it into the middle, and it bounces off of Botman and back out to neutralize. 
Outlet pass to Klinkhammer, and he moves it into the middle. David Moss, and the University of Michigan product, hands it off on the wing. And the shot goes wide and comes to another former Wolverine, Andrew Cogliano. Cogliano takes the feed off the boards and skips it deep into the Phoenix zone. There's another guy that loves to play against the Coyotes. Two career hat tricks for Andrew Cogliano, both against Mike Smith and the Desert Dogs. Miller handles this one from high in the air, and we take a break. The Ducks with their first lead of the night. I asked Bruce Boudreau earlier today if he was thinking about how he was going to manage his team after the Olympics, and he said, right now I am worried only about tonight's game and the next seven, Detroit, Vancouver, Chicago, St. Louis, Winnipeg, and the Kings back-to-back. -back. Uh, those are some pretty darn good teams that is capturing the focus of Anaheim's head coach. Uh, tonight he'll worry about only the Coyotes, but uh, the Ducks know they're going to have to really play well in the next eight to keep racking up points. Paul Mary racing after a loose puck that's batted away by Klesla. The former Blue Jacket then has it taken back by Paul Mary. Bodker trying to clear up the middle. Benino gets a stick on it, batted to the line, but held in. Valeski got it through. Boy, that was a knuckleball, and Grice able to steer it aside. Well, this line's been good tonight, really good, and uh, it's all about second effort, and here's Matt Valeski again. He's got that quick release, gets it on net, and Grice holds on to that. Valeski riding a five-game scoring streak coming into tonight. And he tried to extend it right there. Yeah, and it's just plain old-fashioned hard work. Remember what I said about Bruce Boudreaux encouraging Matt Bolesky to be a straight-line player? Grice, by the way, a little off-balance. He's not moving into that shot uh, when Bolesky releases it. You mentioned the five-game streak, Johnny. He's got seven points in those five games. So another guy whose offense has picked up. All right, we got a discussion going on between the linesmen. Back in the Phoenix zone, Francois Beauchemin and Hampus Lindholm were involved. I don't know. Referee down at the Zamboni corner as well. I'm not exactly sure what the discussion centers around. And now they'll drop it to the left of Thomas Grice. The former San Jose Shark sees Perot win the draw from Chip Chura. And behind the net, a rolling puck that Perot gets away from Yandel. Morris breaks it up, and then up the wall, can't get it past Silverberg. 16-year veteran, feeds it into the middle, and Chip Chura skates it as far as the neutral zone before he has to hinge it back. Yandel joins the play, throws it across, picked off. Ducks could have numbers as the Coyotes get caught up ice. Perot looking for a trailer, cuts to the middle on his backhand. Oh, rebound there for Maroon, and he steered it just wide. To the line, Lindholm holds the line. Big screen for Maroon in front, and Grice fought through it. Well, well, smart play by Lindholm just to snap that puck into traffic. And you, you just can't teach those things to young defensemen. I mean, that's just great instincts from the youngster. Takes it off the boards and tips it to the corner. Perot gets inside on Yandel and sweeps it around. Good effort for Matthew Perot. Ducks changing as Penner behind the net finds Perry. Back to Penner. Score! Wow. Well, you said he hadn't been able to finish the shot he did there. It's 3-1. to one. Uh, Corey Perry puts it on a tee for Dustin Penner. And this time, the big man steps into it. And this is the sweet spot, John. He just hammers this. What a rocket off the stick of Dustin Penner. Well, between injuries and the like, it had been a while since Dustin Penner had scored. 11 games in all. Remember, he missed some of those games due to the elbow injury. Elbow looks pretty good here. Yeah, right? it certainly does. Uh, he just hammered that into the top corner. No one's going to stop that one. You know, credit Matthew Perot at the start of that shift for keeping a puck alive in the offensive zone. He got his... Oh! Shoulder in front of Keith Yandel. And the Ducks were able to get the cycle going, and Perry was able to find Penner. For Dustin Penner, his 300th career NHL point. And it comes on his 11th goal of the season from Perry and Perot. It's 3 to 1 Anaheim as we approach the halfway mark of the hockey game. Time of the goal 9 11. And after getting down 1 0 in the opening frame, three straight unanswered for the Ducks. Korpakoski into the Anaheim zone. Bumped by Botman, lays it back. Ekman-Larsen 
purposely throws it wide. He didn't have a shooting lane. And Fistrick ahead for winning. Connor Murphy, the rookie, hammers it back in off the side of the Anaheim goal. And Fistrick is there to cover up. Botman up the middle, and there's space as he takes a big hit to find Koivu. It was Shane Doan. Well, Doan is, is a guy that uh, is a pretty powerful guy up front. And he's trying to send a message. He's trying to do something to energize his team. And if it's not going to come in the form of a goal with, with Doan, you know that it is likely it will come with a body check. All right. Shane Doan has been known to pick on young defensemen. Just ask Cam Fowler. As he was on the receiving end of a big hit from the veteran before. Campus Lindholm engaged with him earlier tonight. And then it was Sammy Botman's turn on that shift. Great effort by Penner to poke a loose puck all the way back into the Phoenix zone. He sends it right through the crease off the skate of Getzloff. Lovejoy doesn't have anything, so he serves it around the base of the dasher. Perry in front again. It's Penner. Great pass to Getzloff. Goes backhand and wow. scores. Oh, that was all skill. This is just an unbelievable goal from the Ducks. It starts with Penner in the offensive zone. I mean, that's just too much fun for the Ducks' big line. <laughs> wow, what a goal. 23rd goal of the season for Ryan Getzlaff. But watch this play by Dustin Penner. It was Penner that kept it alive, gets it over, and then Getzlaff just draws everyone towards him and fakes them all out. Getzloff goes forehand, backhand. He moves that puck 20 feet before he shovels it into a wide open net. We got a goaltending change here for the Coyotes, and this one's not on Grice. I mean, there's nothing he can do. He was just left all alone, and the Ducks' big line just dominant that shift. Well, for the first half of this hockey game, it was the secondary scoring, but the big line has come back with a vengeance for Anaheim, and Getzloff in his 600th career game here tonight. Picks up his 23rd goal of the season. And his third in the last two games. Penner with a nifty assist on the play as well. He's got a goal and an assist just all in the last few moments. And it's now 4-1 to Ducks. Benino all over Morris as he trickles it into the zone. Palmieri comes up with it, and it's off the side of the net. Mike Smith smells Grice, and he now appears in his 300th career NHL game. And we showed you the numbers earlier. If you weren't with us, it hasn't been a good run for the Canadian Olympian, and he can't get this one as it's high on the boards in behind the Phoenix goal. The Ducks with four or more goals for the sixth straight game here. And here's a turnover. Ekman Larson comes in. Hiller with a great glove save. Oh, good stop. Hiller with the right hand. Ekman Larson bearing down on Jonas Hiller. And it's right into the catching glove. Welcome back to Glendale. The Ducks lead it 4-1. to one. Sammy Botnan with the go-ahead goal. Sammy, what do you guys have to do to keep this momentum going? No, we just got to play like this. We dump the puck in deep and go there and pressure their D and just go shoot the puck in the net and uh, keep going like this. Thanks, Sammy. Thank you. John? The Ducks have erupted for three here in the second period. Now up 4-1, but don't overlook the saves. Well, don't, well, I like the way they simplify the game. Just shoot the puck in the net. That's what Sammy Botnan said. Just keep doing that, and good things will happen. Face off to the right of Jonas Hiller. Marty Hansel, who's over 54% in the faceoff circle, wins the draw. This is a good faceoff team. The Ducks have faced some of the best in the league this week. Boston, Nashville, who leads the league. The Coyotes are in the top ten as well. Verbata gets it to the line, and Stone angles it off the wall. A fat rebound for Hansel. And now the puck battle ensues in the corner. Lindholm knocks down Ekman Larson, the defenseman, deep in the zone. And the puck comes back up the wall, his point being covered by Verbata, who walks it to the middle. And a glove save by Jonas Hiller. And some pleasantries, and as you might expect, some frustration from the Phoenix Coyotes after the whistle. Team has been struggling a bit of late, and it's not getting any better right now. Still a limited supply of holiday packs remain. They include two tickets to three upcoming Ducks games and more. Order now at AnaheimDucks.com slash holiday pack. Bruce Boudreaux 
And it's got to like what he has seen from his team tonight. Uh, they're playing uh, as quick a game, John, as we have seen in some time. There's a lot of pace to tonight's effort for Anaheim. Puck comes off the wall and a two-on-one as Fowler had Cogliano but couldn't get the pass over. Yandel got a piece of it. Yandel did a good job. He, he cut Fowler off before he was able to get that puck across. It, it was kind of a gamble by Keith Yandel, but that gamble paid off. Lovejoy steps up in the neutral zone to knock it away from Doan. Bodker follows up. Mikhail Bodker in behind the Anaheim goal. On his backhand, the Danish native just throws it back in below the goal line, and it's intercepted there by Winnick, who wires it around. Morris holds it in, and Winnick again gets to it. This time up the wall, he finds Cogliano. Rink wide, Fowler joins the rush, takes it off the wall, and feathers it in. Just under seven to go, second period. The Ducks have chased Thomas Grice with three second period goals, and they lead the Coyotes four to one. Ekman Larson. On his way to the Olympic Games for Sweden, wires it around. But denied there by Fistrick, who sent it right back in. Got a puck handling goaltender in the game now, and Mike Smith. So okay. keep an eye on the dump ins for the Ducks. Penner carried it in, couldn't keep it on his stick, but good second efforts by Anaheim. Botnan got caught up ice. Chip Chura and Halpern two on one, and Chip Chura tripped over the blue line. Now he stick handles around. Fistrick turns and rolls it just wide. Fistrick recovers, engaging Halpern, lifting his stick in the corner. Chip Chura keeps it alive, kicked away by Mark Fistrick. Knifed up the wall, and Penner has a man streaking onside. Corey Perry, and out came Smith. Perry, oh, denied on a sliding play by Michael Stone. What a play by Stone. What an unbelievable play by him. Penalty coming up to the Coyotes. In behind the net, Stone able to touch up. A helter-skelter second period for the Coyotes continues. They'll be shorthanded when we come back. Well, Ducks with a 4-1 lead almost make it a 5-1 lead. Dustin Penner looking for Corey Perry, flips it into the open space. Mike Smith loses the race. Perry thinks he's got the short side net available to him, but it's a great defensive play by Michael Stone. On the same play, watch Antoine Vermette. A little chop, chops the stick out of Dustin Penner's hands, and that costs him a couple of minutes, so Ducks on the power play. Second of the night for Anaheim. They're 0 for 1. Lindholm gets it from Paul Mary. Gives it back to him. Kyle's pass taken off the skate by Lindholm. He and Perot a few feet apart. And then the return pass gets away from Hampus. Back into neutral ice. Silverberg curls it back ahead. And Perot into the zone. Leads it ahead for Maroon. Back to the line. Lindholm looks over. Sets up Palmieri one time or missed the mark. That was a dangerous opportunity there for Kyle Palmieri and a nice job by Lindholm who draws people towards him. Offside is the call. Johnny, the, the young defenseman again, Lindholm, watch what he does here on this last play. It's, it's a little subtle little fake that draws one of the penalty killers towards him. Gets the puck in the middle of the ice, winds up fake. That draws and freezes everyone before he slides it over to Kyle Palmieri. Again, those natural instincts of Hampus Lindholm are an awful lot of fun to watch. Off the face-off, Stone sends it all the way down, and Hiller forced to play it behind the net. Coyotes have not scored more than two goals in any of the four meetings this season against Anaheim. In fact, they've scored exactly two in all four games. They trail right now four to one. And they're shorthanded for another minute. Oliver Ekman Larson drops it off for Bada's shot. A little friendly fire. I think it hit Ekman Larson. And now it's recovered as Fowler gets it from Getzloff. Four and a half to go in the second. And a nice seam pass up the left side. Pileski fakes the shot, then takes it. It goes wide right to Perry. Perry brings it off the wall, pitches it back to Benino, and to the line he finds Getzloff. Fowler takes it across into the middle. Perry wide open, fired just wide. What a chance for Corey Perry. And look out here. Boy, Getzloff did a good job to knock that puck down. David Moss was almost in alone on a shorthanded breakaway. Fowler brings it back in all the way across, and it just skips away from Getzloff. Lowers his shoulder, keeps it in, finds Perry again, only to lose the handle. And Mikhail Bodker the other way. Bodker pestered on the back check by Winnick. 
And again, the Ducks recover. Under 10 seconds in the power play. Koivu has space up the right side and into the Phoenix zone. Tried to give it back to Wick, but he fanned on it. That'll do it. The penalty is over for Meta. Out of the boxes behind the defense. Gets the feed. He's in on a break. Oh, and that went off the post and out of play. Antoine Vermet jumps out of the penalty box, gets a perfect feed, and he is in alone. See him jump into the middle of the ice? Great pass onto his stick. He's trying to go top glove. Sometimes when you're playing against a red-hot goaltender, you slice it a little bit too thin, Johnny. And he goes off the crossbar and out of play. It's a, another break for Jonas Hiller. And another level of frustration for Antoine Vermette. And the rest of the Coyotes off the draw. Yandel's shot hits something on the way and goes wide on the short side. Free puck to the near side again, Yandel, and he misses short side again. Cogliano chips it up the glass and out. And then it comes back to him. Andrew through center ice. Knocked down at the blue line by Shane Doan. Got the puck into the zone, however. Now Doan, bothered by Koivu, does work it up the wall for Ribeiro. Mike Ribeiro hands it off. The trailer is Doan, knifed off his stick by Koivu, and then swatted back by Cogliano. This goes right on goal, so no icing. Smith forced to play it. Link Hammer will get to this one first, so no icing. And Vermette in the corner keeps it away from Fowler. Behind the net, Fowler moves it into the middle. Perot careful with it. Silverberg carries it out and now trickles it back into the Phoenix zone. And Maroon pressures Murphy. Connor Murphy uses the glass to clear as he paid the price. Maroon delivering the hit. I mean, you, you really see the advantage that the Ducks have in a game like this. They'll be able to roll four lines. They have a comfortable lead. They can keep the pace up high. Here's Maroon. He rifles one into the glove of Mike Smith, who holds on. I mentioned it earlier in the period. The streak continues for Anaheim offensively now. Half a dozen consecutive with four goals or more. First time in te team history. And the only two teams, by the way, who are ahead of the Ducks, averaging more goals per game, the Chicago Blackhawks and the St. Louis Blues. And when I saw that, I was a little bit surprised. St. Louis quietly, John, has put together a one whale of a season as well. Yeah, the Blues now the front runners in the Central Division. Those two teams you just mentioned in that order, Brian, the road trip next weekend for the Ducks, as they will be Friday night at United Center, and then at Scott Trade Center on Saturday. And that's a tall order when you play two of the top three teams in the NHL on uh, consecutive nights on the road. The Ducks won both of those games. The last time they had that same back-to-back. -back. Back uh, in early December. Yeah, and they, and they just played two terrific hockey games in order to get the job done. Here in Phoenix, they lead the Coyotes 4-1. A minute and a half to go in the opening period, or excuse me, the second period. Both teams got a goal in the opening period. The Ducks have scored all three here in the second. Stone's shot blocked. And now a loose puck on the wall. Blocked back by Getzloff as Ekman Larson just tried to shoot it through him. Took a little bit of a bite out of the captain who goes to the bench for a change. He's strong though, isn't he? Ekman Larson, very strong on his skates. Hansel brings it back and Ekman Larson misses wide. He gets it back middle of the ice. His wrist shot knocked down in front. And again, it's Ekman Larson who keeps it in. Now under a minute to play in the second period. Puck chopped to the front of the Anaheim goal. And Fistrick winds it around to the near side. Careful with it is Poivu, possible two on one. Penner had Perry with him. Tries to drop it back. Verbata got a stick on it. Very nearly put it on his own net. Francois Boschma gets the center red line and feathers it in behind it. Smith, who plays the puck so well, very calmly waits for it to come to him and moves it. Lindholm fans on it and coughs the puck up. Verbata gave it to Korpakoski, and Boschma stepped in to deflect it out of play. Well, the Ducks look comfortable, and they've done a good job tonight getting in the shooting lanes. A moment ago, a good block again by Francois Boschma. And if they can get into the locker room uh, with this three-goal lead, they got 18.2 seconds left in this period. They, this is one they can really be proud of. The Coyotes came out of the gates hard. It's kind of funny when you look at this game. The Ducks came out hard in the opening period only to yield the first goal. I, I thought Phoenix 
had a terrific first four or five minutes of their second period, and then Anaheim just ratcheted it up again. And, and I'm reminded of some comments made by Barry Trotz of the Nashville Predators when he was asked about the Ducks, and he said they've just got so much more pace to their game this season than they have in past years. We have seen that in the second period again tonight. So the moral of the story is if you're going to come out and storm the castle early, you better get something to show for it because neither the Ducks or Coyotes did in the opening minutes of each period here. And it's gone the other way on each of them respectively since then. Phoenix ended up scoring the first goal of the game. Anaheim ends up scoring three unanswered here in the second. And the big line looked particularly dominant. The coaches call it playing fast. And then the Ducks have certainly played fast in this game. And they have been as opportunistic as they have been for some time now. This is a dangerous, explosive offensive team. And boy, they are fun to watch. It's a 4-1 lead in Phoenix as Anaheim. Looking to make it six in a row and 16 of their last 17. They got 20 minutes to play, but it wasn't looking good before Sammy Votnin snuck one through, and then the big line struck. First it was Penner, and then it was Getzloff on a highlight real goal that you will see again. 4-1 after two. Presley prohibited. It's a 4-1 lead for the Ducks. Three different players with multiple point nights so far, and one of them Dustin Penner. No, Dustin Penner has played great against Phoenix this year. This is back on November the 23rd. He got a pair of goals in that game. Of course, in tonight's game, he hammered one home. He also made a pretty fancy play right here. The big man shows some impressive footwork. He gets around Murphy. Watch him tuck this puck in. This kept the cycling play going. At the end of this shift, it was Penner that passed it to Ryan Getzloff for one of the prettiest goals we have seen from the Ducks this season. Uh, the numbers for Penner against Phoenix this year, five points in five games, a plus five rating, and he's having some fun tonight with a goal and an assist. He had gone six games without a point, picks up his 300th career point on the goal. And Penner a plus one so far here this evening, one of many Ducks who hover near the top of the league's plus minus rating. Coming into tonight, the Ducks had four different players performing at a tw plus 20 rating or better, including that man, Hampus Lindholm, who's second overall in the league at plus 23. Francois Boschema, his defense partner, fifth in the league at plus 22 coming into tonight. And then Perry and Getzloff were both plus 20. It's a 4-1 Anaheim lead as Hansel tries to wrap it around, and Hiller was wise to that, and he covers up. Looking over at the Anaheim bench, and we do not see the captain, Ryan Getzloff, on the Ducks bench. Ryan, I remember he blocked a shot late in that second period by Oliver ekman Larson. He pursued the puck back into the Phoenix zone, but as soon as he could, he changed. It was late in the period. I have to wonder if that might be the source. Korpakoski trying to force it in front of the Anaheim goal. Broken up and Fowler moves it away. The Ducks clear the zone. Now it's Yandel from out of the Phoenix end and he feeds it ahead on left wing. Korpakoski who has the Coyotes only goal tonight sends it in deep. Coyotes lost here on Thursday night 4-1 to to the Minnesota Wild. Trail by the same number right now as we're early in the third period. That was a game in which they gave up three goals in the final frame. They gave up three tonight in the middle period. Opportunity for a change as Ekman Larson is forced all the way back. And Stone gives it back to him. Kermet got it across the line. Klinkhammer off the wing. In and out of the glove of Hiller. The Ducks battle it to the line but not out. Now Maroon will bring it out. Jonas Hiller, in his 12-game winning streak, has given up two goals or less in 10 of those games. Here's Maroon as he got a fortuitous bounce, and the puck got through Smith, but his defense there to cover up. The ironic part to me, Brian, is that in the throes of this wonderful personal winning streak for Jonas Hiller, he doesn't have a shutout. To be going as well as he's been going, 
You almost half expect that there'd be one or two in there. Well, he, he's played great, but it has been the offense of the Ducks. I mean, on, on the nights where you know, he's been giving up two, three, four goals, uh, the offense has bailed him out. And then bailed out is probably the wrong yeah, term. Two because goals is pretty much what most coaches are yeah, asking from their goaltender. But, but it also suggests that he wasn't playing well when I use that term. So that's not fair to him. Moss got it to the net. It bounces off of Hiller. And the Ducks break back out. Penner streaking up right wing. Gets it from Perry. Takes the shot. Well save Mike Smith. John, I want to go back and I want to show you Ryan Getzloff's last shift. And in this shift, he blocks two shots. There was the first one, and that hits him, uh, looks like it, on the left foot. And then when he goes out to the point, he also takes that shot up high. Um, afterwards, Getzloff changed, went to the bench, did, did not play another shift in that period. So we don't know exactly uh, what the issue is with Ryan Getzloff. Uh, we're trying to find out and get as much information as we possibly can. But for right now, there is no sign of him on the Anaheim bench. And a great job by our crew here in Phoenix to go back and find that as well. Our exalted leader, producer Mike Levy, playing a little bit shorthanded tonight. He's under the weather, but giving the usual grade-A performance as we get a delayed offside here called against Phoenix. He's a gamer. He's got a games played streak, doesn't he? I don't know what it's at. I think somewhere around 2,000. Now that is a very content-looking Anaheim bench. You know, it was... At the morning skate today, uh, you could just see that they had jumped in their step, and uh, they have looked quick in tonight's game. I mean, it, as mentioned, I, even though they were tied after the opening 20 minutes, that was their best first period in a long, long time. Can't tell it when you look at the face of uh, Bruce Boudreaux's face. He's still concerned about the next 17 minutes. He's always saying to his players, push the pace. Fowler sends it in, and Smith whiffs on it behind the net. Here's a turnover, and a chance of Palmieri trying to be a little too benevolent as he was looking to give it back to Valeski. Hitting those scoring areas. Sometimes just get the puck to the net. Fowler does a nice job to protect the puck. Valeski stepped on it and does a good job to keep his balance. Up the middle for Matthew Perot. He has two assists in this hockey game tonight. And he spins to some open ice and chips it ahead just out of the reach of Matt Valeski. Nine different ducks on the score sheet so far through the first two periods. Perot and Perry each have two assists. Penner has a goal and an assist. And Smith plays this one quickly. The other thing that we have talked about with this Ducks team that has separated them from everyone else in the entire National Hockey League has been their ability to protect leads this year. Speed through the neutral zone here as it's Penner who taps it around Stone and then gets it back Koivu into the slot for Perry. Lays it to the line. A nice play by Boshima behind the back. Perry keeps it alive again. Koivu for Penner off his skate. The open man Hampus Lindholm. And again into the slot. Penner taps it away as Koivu tried to make a little pass. Penalty coming up to the Coyotes. And the Ducks about to go on the power play yet again. The only thing they haven't done tonight so far is convert on the power play. And Francois saint Laurent says it's a hooking call here. Well, no Getzloff, and so this power play unit is going to look a little bit different. Let's see if we can pick up the hook. There's Dustin Penner who wins a battle, and you can see the clink hammer reaches and uh, puts a little tug onto the arms of Dustin Penner. Costs him a couple of minutes. 0 for 2 tonight are the Ducks against Dave Tippett's penalty kill. The Phoenix coach looks on. Anaheim 20 points ahead of them in the Pacific Division race. And Paul Mary holds it in at the point. Phoenix fifth in the division, ninth in the conference, but in the top half of the National Hockey League, 13th overall. But right now, as you mentioned earlier, Brian, it wouldn't be good enough for a postseason berth. The West has just been that good and that competitive so far this year. In fact, it was Minnesota that overcame 
Phoenix in the race with their win here on Thursday night. Well, that was a big win for the Wild. And uh, you, know, you talked about it, John, the last game of a six-game homestand here. They were expecting big things on this six-game homestand, and it looks like they're going to finish it under 500. Perot taken down in the corner, continues to battle on as Korpakoski lost his stick in that battle, and play goes on. Paul Mary manning the point, holds it in. Now Perot into the middle. Silverberg rockets it right on. I don't know whether Smith kicked that away or did that hit the defenseman. I think it goes off the right leg of uh, Mike Smith. And we've seen a couple of opportunities for Silverberg in the last few games from that exact same spot on the ice. Lindholm stick handles out high. Paul the killers for Phoenix got to be tired. They're at the end of a shift here. Down low, Maroon wants to bring it in front. Got it to Lindholm. Off the crossbar. They say uh, no in. goal. No, I thought it in. went in. That puck's in the net. Yeah, that's a goal for Lindholm. And the near side referee in the corner, Saint Laurent, waved it off immediately. No, this one's uh, easily in. Remember last game, Patrick Maroon, a little backdoor play. This time he spots Hampus Lindholm, and he rips it off the back inside bar. Watch this. What a play. There's a camera up there as well that that puck may have bounced off of, but there's no question that this puck's in the back of the net. Well, right there where the camera angle comes from, the referee, there he is, Francois Saint Laurent. He says no goal, and everyone on the ice, even the guys in red, had stopped. Yeah. All I'm saying is he waved it off. I didn't say it wasn't in. But uh, they'll take a look at it in Toronto and Saint Laurent on the phone right now. And it's a pretty short conversation. Well, the situation room uh, will make the defining uh, determination here. After review, the puck did cross the goal line, therefore we got a goal on the play. Now Lindholm, second goal of the evening, uh, but what a play by Patrick Maroon down low. It looked just like the pass to Solani, didn't it? Well, it, it, in one respect, it was different. The pass to Solani, he didn't waste any time and stick handle it. It was a one-touch pass. This time, Maroon delayed just a little bit and passed it around the defender, so... Real nice play by the Ducks power play unit, and they get on the board again. Well, very quietly, Pat Maroon with now a three-game scoring streak, and he has six points in his last nine games. The Ducks lead five to one. So the second of the night, fifth of the year for Lindholm at 6-10. Maroon and Perot draw the helpers. Perot now with a three-assist game. And the Ducks on top 5-1, and that puck did come across the blue line, so it's offside. Anaheim adds one on the power play, up big in the desert. Well, go to Hooters and tell them Hampus Lindholm sent you, because his power play goal means the Ducks have scored five goals, and Hooters will give you five free wings. Go to AnaheimDucks.com slash Hooters first. Print the coupon tonight, and you'll have 24 hours to redeem it at any. Southern California Hooters location. John, we have got an update on Ryan Getzloff. Uh, we are being told that it is a lower body injury. He is being kept out for precautionary reasons for the rest of tonight's game. Well, it's a 5-1 lead. 13-15 to go. Long way to go in the hockey game. But we've only mentioned it a couple of times. The Ducks are home tomorrow to play host to the Detroit Red Wings. I think it'll be interesting to watch how particularly if the score stays the same or improves for the Ducks, how Bruce Boudreaux handles his bench down the stretch here. Obviously aware, as a head coach is, that his team has another game ahead in about 24 hours from right now. No, I don't think it changes much for Boudreaux. I mean, he plays four lines for the most part anyway. The only thing that changes is the actual personnel. I mean, and here's Nick Benino stepping in, replacing Ryan Getzlaff, so he's We've got a few less centers on the ice tonight. Yeah, Koivu took a couple of turns earlier in the period as Penner trying to move it ahead. The power play goal for the Ducks. Now 6 of 13 in their last four games on the power play. And if the extra man unit comes alive, it's almost scary to think, Brian, what this team's capable of. Burbata scampers through the neutral zone. Leads it in at Korpakoski with a hip check from Boschman. Now kicks it to the corner and pursues it there. 
Morris from the line partially blocked and it broke the stick of Palmieri in the process. He goes to the bench to get another. Morris will try again. That one got through, missed everything. And Palmieri skates over his previous stick and moves it through the neutral zone. Francois Boschema gets it deep. Smith throws it to no one in particular and finds Verbata up the near wing. Both teams go for changes as Lovejoy tracks it, or excuse me, Lovejoy lets Fowler take it. So what Boudreaux was looking for here uh, the rest of the way in this game is how many scoring chances his team gives up. You know, have, do they have the ability to play just a real solid defensive period the rest of the way? He does not care one bit about any more goals from his Ducks. Ten different players on the score sheet. Four different players with multiple point games. And for the third straight night, Pat Maroon's going to drop the gloves. He and Rusty Klesla go at it just inside the blue line of the Phoenix zone. Maroon, again, holding his combatant at bay with that left arm, completely outstretched and throwing overhand rights and uppercuts, gets rid of the elbow pad. I don't think of Rusty Klesla as a fighter. No. He actually put a hit on Matthew Perot in the neutral zone, and then uh, Maroon answered the bell. Maroon was there in the vicinity. That's the eighth fighting major of the season for Maroon. As I mentioned, he's gone in each of the last three games. At the conclusion of that fight, I, I mean, he had lost his elbow pad, and when he fell, it looked like he may have fallen on that right elbow, so we hope he's okay. I, I, you know, the, the, the thing is, I, I don't. I think it was a reluctant fight for Pat Maroon here. His team's got a 5-1 lead. You don't want to do anything that gives your opponent momentum, but the elbow pad's off when he falls onto that right elbow, and that's... You know, players often get hurt in fights not by getting hit by a punch, but when they fall to the ice. And we hope that Maroon is okay. The always affable St. Louis native catching his breath. As I mentioned, he's got assists in the last three games, six points now in the last nine games, and he's checking the elbow again as he gets the sweater off and looks to be in a little bit of pain. You players players lose when they're in a scrap. They like to lose the elbow pad so that their punching arm has a little bit more freedom, if you will. But you lose it. Five each for Klesla and Maroon. Yeah, sometimes bad things happen when it comes out. You know, Brian, it's interesting you mentioned Klesla not known for dropping the gloves that much. I mentioned earlier it's... It's been a hand pass here. It's been a difficult year for Klesla. He, he went through some injuries. He went down to the American League for the first time in his career. It was a rehab stint, but he's been in and out of the lineup since he was back. He missed some games due to an illness, and sometimes you have to change what you do to get a coach's attention and try to keep yourself or work your way back into the lineup, and I think that might be why Klesla is doing what he did right there. Well, and, and he's at that stage of his career that sometimes you really got to do whatever it takes to stay in the lineup. He's 31 years old, uh, not having a great season. He had a concussion, you know, as you mentioned, John, a concussion earlier this season. And so you get labeled once, once you reach a certain stage of your career if you're often injured. Especially if you're not a guy that puts up points and is more of a, you know, a mucker and a grinder for the most part. Boy, well, delayed penalty coming up on the Ducks, and for the longest time, Mike Smith I don't know whether he didn't recognize us or he didn't want to leave the zone because the play was still in the neutral zone. He finally gets to the bench for the sixth attacker, and Halpern angles it back. And he's fortunate he didn't put more angle on it because it goes all the way back wide of the empty Phoenix goal. Nearing the halfway mark of the third period, Yandel's pass to Kennedy. He gains the line. Chipchura pulls up, stepped into by Fistrick, passes it back, and it's touched up at last by... Bolesky and the Ducks will go shorthanded here at 9.53. Yeah, it's Hampus Lindholm, and it's going to be a high stick. And here's why. Uh, Jeff Halpert is coming after him, and Lindholm says, if you're going to hit me, you're going to have to... A little bit old school right there, yeah, Todd. I go, like it. We used to say you got to go through the Sherwood yeah, if you're going the Sherwood to... Sherwood bow tie. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you got to go through the composite yeah. if you're going to get a hit on me. Fourth power play of the night for Phoenix. Lindholm doing a lot of things tonight that he doesn't normally do. He's picked up two minor penalties. He's got two goals. And he sits with Maroon 
The Coyotes 0 for 3 with the extra man thus far. And it's Ekman Larson who dances on the goal line and then Winnick gloves down his bid. And Koibu didn't get enough on it to get it out. Yandel got it through and Hansel tipped it to the corner. Oh, that Marty Hansel, I'll tell you what, he, he has got some good hands down low. We've seen him tip a number of pucks on point shots tonight. Now their penalty going to come up here to the Ducks as it's touched up by Koibu who will go off for the trip. And an opportunity forthcoming for Phoenix if they harbor hopes of getting back in this game. They're going to have a two-man advantage for over a minute and a half. Yeah, Koivu, uh, you see the trip. It's there's no question about it. He gets his stick between the legs of Shane Doan. The other thing that you worry about as a coach, you know, five on three, players are hammering one-timers. We saw Getzloff already block a shot with his foot and not come back into this game. And those types of things happen a, a lot in these five on three situations. Hansel thrown from the circle. He's a 55% option. Ribeiro steps in and takes it. He's 45% on the air and wins it. So that's big for the Coyote power play as they've got plenty of time with a two-man advantage here. Ekman Larson sweeps it down low. Ribeiro finds the open man and a good job by Verbata to keep possession. He almost kicked it away. Verbata to the middle. That's off a mask of Hiller. Rebound loose in the blue paint and chipped wide by Hansel. He was able to dig that rebound out, and then he just missed the net. One timer is off the mark. No On the stick. far side, no stick for Benino, who broke it. He goes to the bench to get another. Ribeiro down low, and Don't was open in front, trying to jab it loose as it was on the side of the net. No stick for Hiller now. And Benino intercepts and clears. Wow. That's unbelievable. Boschman's stick shattered. He had to get one from a forward. Benino copped his up. Then Hiller's stick was knocked out of his hands. Ekman Larson puts it on the side of the net and set it off the skate of Hansel and Ed. So the Coyotes get a bounce and they got a minute left on a five on four advantage here. Right? This may have gone off an Anaheim defender skate as well. Here's the puck, work down low. Verbata's going to throw it to the front of the net. No, you're right. It is Hansel's foot that redirects that puck into the net. And because he is backing away, it's hard to say that that was a distinct kicking motion. Now you can direct the puck in with your foot. And that's exactly what Marty Hansel did. Yeah. I think they're going to hold off and they're going to take a look at this to make sure it's not kicked into the net. Yeah, he turns his skate. I don't know, as you said, if, the, if you could really call that a, a kicking motion. Here's another look at it. Watch, Watch the, the right, right skate. foot. Yeah. He kind of pivots. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to see an overhead on that one. It, there wasn't a huge celebration from Marty Hansel, I'll tell you that much. He's got to sell it more at that point in time if he, he he does turn the skate and then as the puck comes in there there is a little bit of a contact maybe here's your overhead i i think because his the toe of his skate is not going towards the goal line that you can't say that that's a kicking motion it, it's certainly a, a directed puck but uh, I got a tough time believing that the situation room will say that that's a, a kicking motion. Well, there's former Ducks assistant coach Newell Brown reaching over the shoulder of Marty Hansel and having a word with him. Now talking to Dave Tippett. Did two tours of duty behind the Anaheim bench. Always good to see Newell. Right now the focus on Ian Walsh, who's on the headset, talking to the situation room in Toronto. And he will inform the patrons here at jobbing.com momentarily. Hard to hear, but we have a goal. Yeah. 13th of the year for Hansel, Verbata, and Ekman Larson will get the helpers at 11-10. Well, now the order of business for the Ducks. Uh, kill off the last part of this five-on-four power play. And uh, the Coyotes come up with a loose puck. Here's Yandel who keeps it in. Now a 5-2 hockey game. And Verbata spins it back to a two-man game on the left side of the Anaheim zone. Verbata shot off the stick of Lovejoy goes behind the net. I think that broke Lovejoy's stick. He gets another. It's Silverberg now who doesn't have one. 
Anaheim going through the stick budget on this penalty kill. As Ekman Larson holds it in, and Silverberg just trying to get in shooting lanes out there. Ekman Larson, one timer, hard off the end boards, and Vermette can't shovel it under Hiller. Now, that's a great stop by Jonas Hiller. I mean, very active end boards here at Jobbing.com, and then that point shot that's taken from the middle of the ice. When, when it's taken from the middle and it doesn't miss by much, you know, as a goaltender, you've got to scramble back to protect that short side post. Hiller is able to do that with his left leg pad. And that's a good stop. You know, five, at 5-2, five it's still comfortable. At 5-3, the Coyotes have got significant life. Yeah, with eight minutes to go, a long way to go. Don't. Tried to center, went right to the near side post. Hiller got there before Hansel could, and it's wiped the length of the ice by Nick Benino. Final seconds of the penalty to Koivu winding down, and he'll rejoin the play. Anaheim full strength. Home run pass for Ribeiro, intercepted by Lindholm, who then ices it. And that'll bring the face off back as Koivu had just stepped out of the Anaheim penalty box. Fourth annual Anaheim Ducks throwback classic adult hockey tournament is coming up. Presented by Hockey Giant, February 14th through the 17th at the Rinks facilities. Check it out at ducksgold.com slash throwback classic. The other part of protecting a lead, of course, is doing the job in the face-off circle. Now it's Nick Bedino's turn to draw in against Mike Ribeiro. The Ducks as a whole, in, in their last, I, I would say, half-dozen games, John, have really done a good job, a much better job in the face-off circle. There, it seems to me that there's just an increased focus on it by the players on the ice. Now Perot runs down a loose puck, puts it behind the net, and Koivu's centering pass doesn't find Winnick. Anaheim, the number one team on the road in the NHL this season by virtue of their 15th road win on Thursday at Nashville. Trying to keep the ball rolling here tonight in Phoenix. Looking for a six-game winning streak. And their 16th win in their last 17. Offside of the Coyotes who have crept a bit closer by virtue of a power play goal now 5-2 Anaheim. Well, you got to push the pace from the back end. And when you get production out of your blue liners, good things happen. Hampus Lindholm, that was his first goal tonight. Botnan would squeeze one through Thomas Price. Lindholm would sneak down for a power play goal. Hampus Lindholm will turn 20 on January the 20th. Sammy Botnan is 22. You see the production that Anaheim is getting out of their blue line. 33 games, 21 goals from their defense. And the exciting thing about all of that is that these kids are going to be members of the Ducks for a long, long time. And a big reason why their offense figures to be dynamic for a long, long time. And that's not even mentioning the old man, 21-year-old Cam Fowler in the group. And a nice play at the line by Botten and keeps a puck in. And he was in good position to get back defensively had he not. Now it's Michael Stone who leads it out of the Phoenix zone. And Hansel stepped into immediately by Botnan. And a puck inadvertently put over the boards and into the bench area by Matthew Perot. Perot with three helpers in tonight's game has led the offensive charge for the Ducks. Two goals tonight for Hampus Lindholm. And you know, there, there's still people in the Eastern Conference that aren't paying, I don't believe, enough attention to the kind of rookie season that this 19-year-old is having. And uh, if he's not, you know, you get a two-goal performance now from a 19-year-old, and hopefully that, that garners a little bit more attention from the so-called hockey experts in the East about just what a candidate he is for the Calder Trophy. Michael Bodker got it ahead. Vermette tried to center. It's batted back and then fired wide. As Morris got to it, Palmieri able to chip it out of the zone. Now it's Derek Morris into the middle of the ice. Speeds it on the wing, and it's knocked away from Klinkhammer as he gets to the stripe. Transition for Benino, and he can't find Valeski as he wanted him on the drop pass. Vermette's turn, one on five into the Anaheim zone, and he's converged upon and coughs it up. Paul Mary off the boards, back into the Phoenix zone, not far enough for icing. Ducks have got numbers coming back through the neutral zone, and they are defending their blue line well. 
Ekman Larson can only tap it deeper into the zone. Lovejoy engaging as Verbata gets to the loose puck. Angles it back to Ekman Larson. Slides it over for Stone, who keeps the line and sends it wide. Ribeiro leaning into Lovejoy. Bounces off of him on his backhand as he goes up the far boards. Now curls back to his forehand. His shot tipped twice. Never got to Hiller. Verbata touched it first. Now he runs it down in the corner. Stone swings it around. Fowler bumps with Korpakoski. Dug out by Lovejoy. Verbata got a piece of it. Throws it back to the net, and Hiller will hold on to that. Ducks will catch their breath, and we'll be back for the last four and a half in a moment. Pull the tab on Miller time is brought to you by Miller Lite. Plenty to choose from tonight for the Ducks. Oh, boy, was there ever, but this goal where all three members of the big line got involved was just a thing of beauty, and Ryan Getzloff just fakes everybody out. And it's the ability to move that puck from forehand to backhand that uh, creates so much space for Getzloff to slide that into the wide open net. That's a pretty, pretty goal. Right off the draw, puck to Hiller who holds on. The Coyotes need some instant offense. Down three with four and a half to play. They have won only three times in their last 12 games. The losers of three of their last four coming into tonight, and then they go to the road after this one. Hansel just trying to shoot off the draw. To the corner goes Perot. Matthew Perot now has six points in his last three games. As it seems like it's a different offensive star every night for Anaheim. Dustin Penner has been stellar tonight for Anaheim as well. Hansel in front, and he's picked up by Boschman. Puck to the near board. Stone kept it in. Moss trying to get it back. But Anaheim keeps it around the boards on the perimeter. And now Perry swats it away from Ekman Larson. He's got Benino joining him on the rush. Trying to find the trailer Perot, but that out of his reach. And now countering back the red-clad Coyotes. Moss at the end of his shift pulls up at the blue line. And Fistrick won't allow him in. All this while precious time ticking away for the Coyotes. Yeah, the Ducks just working on the clock. Not a lot of pressure deep in Phoenix territory. Flooding the neutral zone with bodies. Botman counters quickly and with speed as always. It's Cogliano across for Penner. Trying to move it into the middle. And Winnick denied as Korpakoski broke it up. Morris moves it. And Bodker throws it back through the middle. Vermet does a good job to keep possession and winds it around. Penner feels the pressure, protects the puck. Winnick lobs it to neutralize. There's little plays where the puck is rimmed around the boards. You know, it's, it's such an advantage to have the size of a Dustin Penner. You, know, you win so many more battles. Lovejoy just wins a physical fight with Korpakoski, and that enables Bolesky to get it deep at the other end. Mike Smith. Out to play it around. Fowler holds it in, gets it to the net. Oh, that one off of Smith and trickled to the far post. Again, he was fortunate no one in white was there. Kyle Palmieri was on the doorstep, could not quite get a touch on the bid by Fowler. 14th time this season that the Ducks have scored at least five goals in a game. And that is almost a third of their games as tonight is game number 47. Murphy gives it to Ribeiro into the middle and Verbata shot blocked by Lovejoy. And I've done a good job blocking shots tonight. Ribeiro gets it back off the half wall. Murphy shot got through. Hiller made the save and the rebound covered up by Fowler who skates to open ice and then his pass kept in by Murphy. Trickle right through the crease. Verbata gets it over and Ribeiro scores. This was a turnover. The Ducks had full control, and they gave one away. Mike Rivero will take it for his 11th goal of the season, but a little bit too cute down low. Fowler tries to get it into the middle. No Anaheim player get a touch on the puck. And a little chaos in front of Jonas Hiller. And it's a wide open net for Mike Rivero. We're going to have a timeout here for Bruce Boudreaux, and he's going to say, you know what? We're with a lead, guys. 
you don't put the puck in the middle of the ice. You use the glass, you use the boards, and you battle it out of the defensive zone. This is a very coachable moment yeah. for Boudreaux. Dave Tippett sensing a little light for his hockey club. Says, hey, we still got 110 seconds left. 18-10 time of the goal. Ribeiro's 11th of the year. And it comes from Verbata and Chipchura. Now a 5-3 hockey game in Phoenix. We know Hansel will be going strong to the front of that. The other thing without Getzloff in the lineup, John, is that, uh, you know, Marty Hansel, big center, six foot five inches. And usually it's a getzloff hansel matchup. And this is where you really sense the absence of the big center that the Ducks are currently playing without. Coyotes are on a delayed offside here. Uh, Ducks throw it around the board, so they'll whistle it down. I, I thought for a moment that Mike Smith was going to stay on the Phoenix bench coming off the timeout, but he returned to the goal crease, and he looks prepared to sprint to the Phoenix bench at the first opportunity here. The clock is not Dave Tippett's sprint with a minute 42 to go in a game that his team trails by two. And Benino battles it to the boards and then goes and gets it. This will keep Smith in the goal crease as Cogliano leads it in. Silverberg shot deflected by Ekman Larson, and Smith freezes it. Now it's a good, quick play by Andrew Cogliano, who spots Jacob Silverberg open on the right side and forces Mike Smith to hang on to that puck. So a few more seconds burned off the clock. 10 to be exact, down to 92 remaining. Shots are even at 30 apiece in this hockey game. Ducks have authored only five in this third period, but keep in mind they had a three-goal lead when the period began, that they stretched to four at one point. And now we got a penalty coming up. I think this is going to go against the Ducks. This is a high-sticking call on Nick Benino. Uh oh this is not good. 126 remaining, and now there is a glimmer of hope for Phoenix. And Dave Tippett still has his timeout as well, if he chooses to use it. And Mike Smith drifts over towards the Phoenix bench and takes a seat as Benino does the same in the Anaheim penalty box. Well, it's, it's Hansel and Benino, and there's the high stick. And Nick Benino was the player that got high stick. It wasn't Marty Hansel, and that's what he's upset about. A little case of mistaken identity there. And Benino touches the helmet of Hansel, but Benino took one in the face. So it's the sixth Phoenix power play of the game. Smith is on the bench. It's a six on four. And the Coyotes look to get within one with still over a minute to go. Doan drifts into the middle. Fowler intercepts a pass. Then just tries to eat it along the wall. Back to the line. Ekman Larson. Yandel one timer well wide. And that one's off the glass and out of play. Very nearly hit Hansel in front with some friendly fire. I'm going to go back to that penalty. Uh, Nick Benino and Marty Hansel involved on the play. Watch the stick of Benino here. And then Hansel hits Benino right in the mouth with his stick. So he, he did catch a piece of the back of the head helmet of Marty Hansel, but... Uh, it's a tough goal that goes against Anaheim. Phoenix wins the draw now under a minute to go in the game. Doan bumps in the corner and the puck recovered by the Coyotes. Ekman Larson walks it to the middle. Gets it back. Has his bid blocked and then swept out to center ice by Cogliano. Yandel lobs it right back in. Hiller is there. Infield fly rule. He will not take it. He lays it off and allows Boschema to ice the puck. A smart play. A real smart play by Jonas Hiller. Give it up. Let Boschman get rid of it in a hurry. The Coyotes did not do a good job of pressuring Jonas Hiller there, that's for sure. Rivero gains the line. Hansel trying to stuff it in front. Knifed away by Boschman. Verbata gets it back. His pass comes through. Rivero has it blocked by Fistrick and then swatted to the line. Yandel holds it in. Ten seconds to go in the game as they get it to the net. And Hiller will cover up as Hansel is sent sprawling with his stick in pieces. Fistrick and Boschman uh, were chopping a little wood, shall we say, down low. Uh, and Marty Hansel was taking the worst of the abuse. But if you want to go to the front of that and hang around, you know, you got to be willing to pay a price to get down there. Or, or at least there's an expectation that you're going to pay a price. Now just 10.5 seconds remains. 
And the face off to the right of Hiller with the net empty at the Phoenix end of the ice. 45 seconds officially remains in Benino's penalty. 5-3 Ducks as Vermette to oppose Koivu on the draw. You got to think Vermette's either going to, yeah, I thought he might try to shoot it right off the draw. He got it back to Yandel. His shot didn't get through. Block, bounces, and just wide. Trying to center. Winnick blocks it. It's off the side of the net for Vermette. And the hockey game is over. The Ducks continue their mastery of the Coyotes sweeping the season series. Jonas Hiller has now won 13 straight. The win streak for Anaheim stretches to six. And now 16 of their last 17 overall. Somewhat historical, Brian. Well, it hasn't happened but six times in the last 84 years. Uh, this is the kind of role that the Ducks are on, folks. Uh, this is special, and it's an awful lot of fun to be a Duck fan right now to watch this team light people up night after night with four and five goals up on the board. The final score tonight at Jobbing.com Arena. The Anaheim Ducks five and the Phoenix Coyotes three. The beat goes on for Anaheim. They'll be home to host the Red Wings tomorrow. Stay with us. Ducks Live is next.